All right. Yeah, we're good. Two bottles of water ready to go. That's good. All right. I think it's water. <laughs> yes. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners. It is Thursday, June 11th, 2020, at 7 p.m. At this time, if everyone can please rise and face to the east for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Bridget, please take the roll. President Janner? Here. Vice President King? Here. Commissioner Carlson? A little hard to hear you guys. Just absent for right now. Commissioner Egan? Present. Commissioner McBroom? Here. Commissioner Riley? Here. Commissioner Todd? Here. And two on our agenda is uh, our Bond Issue Notification Act, also known as BINA. At this time, a public hearing will be held to receive all comments relative to the district's proposal to sell $1,850,000 in general obligation limited park bonds. At this time, we'll entertain a motion to recess to public hearing for discussion of bond issuance. So moved. Second. Motion by Vice President King, second by Commissioner Riley. Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson, that in. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner McBroom? Can you, I'm sorry, I should have mentioned this before the, you called for the vote. Can you clarify what the hearing is, what we're voting for or committing to? It's just a recess. It's a recess. Okay. Okay. Sorry? We're just going a recess to have to Your volume's jacked. Can you hear us? I heard that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, up a little bit. That's pretty much it. No, Mark, can you can you unmute everybody or or no or? or? I can, um, but you guys have the power to unmute yourselves in the, in you know on the screen as well. Okay. So if you if you mute yourself and then I unmute you, um, that's what causes some confusion when I, somebody's ready to speak again. So we could keep everybody unmuted, um, but just be conscious of that. I think Commissioner Carlson might be muted. Yeah, um, we're working on getting him on. Okay, thank you. Yep. <laughs> Josh, we're waiting on your, uh, Commissioner McGrim, we're waiting on your, uh, on your yes or no vote on recess to the uh, hearing. Is he muted? Yeah, we didn't hear you, Josh. You're muted. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I apologize if you could, if, I could get some clarification on what the public hearing literally I mean, means. I, I, I can restate. I can restate the uh, restate the motion. The, the public hearing is a requirement for any consideration of going into any indebtedness. You have to have a public hearing to receive comments ahead of any action on them. 
So this is just a procedural vote as part of the minutes of the meeting to go have that hearing. It doesn't commit anybody to anything, but if we don't have the hearing, then you can't proceed to even consider the issue. Okay, that's, I just wanted to make sure we weren't committing to anything, so yes. Commissioner Tad? Where's Marie? She says you may have to call me. Okay. okay. Uh, I can call her on the phone and just get her going. Right. Okay. Bobby Carlson says I can't unmute. He's unmuted now. So you can take his? Yes, if I'm, can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. Got it, thank you. Yeah. So, yes. Yes, thank you. Putting it on that to get Marie. No, quick. Folks, look, we're going to take just about one minute here to try to get uh, Commissioner Todd uh, online here with us. Please bear with us for about a minute. Marie, um, why don't we just uh, call you? You just do the meeting um, on voice on the on the um, speakerphone. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it's up to you, but for right now, let me just do on the speakerphone. So we'll just we'll hang up, and Omar's going to call you, and then you'll be on the speakerphone in like two seconds. All right? I'll call you right now. Here we go. All right. Notification Act requiring hearing to receive any comments relative to the district's proposal to sell $1,850,000 in general obligation limited park bonds. All persons desiring to be heard on this matter will have an opportunity to present written or oral testimony to the Board of Park Commissioners. The proposed bonds are for the payment of land condemned or purchased for parks 
for the building, maintaining, improving, and protecting of the same and the existing land and facilities of the district for the payment of outstanding obligations of the district and for the payment of the expenses incident thereto. Before we take any testimony from the public, would any board member like to make comments related to the proposal to issue general obligation limited tax park bonds? Commissioner Egan. Thank you. Um, I, I, like I said earlier, I'm all for the refinance, but I'll be voting uh, no because of fear that we will go with the staff's proposed recommendation, which effectively raises taxes on the residents. We issued these bonds originally to be abated from operations, and once again, we have the staff trying to raise taxes on the people so that they can afford their 4% raises. I say no more. Any other comments? Commissioner Riley? Point of clarification, we don't do 4% raises across the board, and I believe uh, Sue Stanton told us the last meeting that the amount of difference would be approximately $1. I'll be voting yes. That's, that is an estimated amount. Rich? <clears throat> Go ahead, uh, Commissioner McGroom. So yeah, I, I haven't decided yet, but I, I'll have a difficult time if it's a net increase to the levy. Um, you know, so I, I, need to, I need to learn more, but I, I understand, you know, there's an interest savings there. Um, you know, if that interest savings can be passed on to the taxpayer, great, but, um, yeah, I'm having a hard time understanding how we're saving money, but um, it would result in a, a levy increase. Can I, can I, yeah. Director Stanish, you can provide some clarification. Sure. Um, just so everyone knows, Eric um, Anderson is also um, with us for any additional questions. Um, so overall, if we have one, if you think of just overall the, the district's finances in one pool of money, there will be an interest savings um, by refinancing at a lower interest rate. Because there were debt certificates issued, um, and debt certificates are not paid through property taxes, they were, they're paid through our capital fund. So when we look at our, our capital uh, projects for the year, always number one first is we have to pay those debt certificates. And debt certificates typically come with a higher interest rate because they're not backed up by a source such as property taxes. And just a little history, we, we issued debt certificates versus GO Limited bonds back in 2011 um, to be able to, at that point, we were working on a partnership development that um, unfortunately fell through at that time. We didn't have room in our debt service extension base. So to make that happen, we issued these, we issued these debt certificates. So in essence, what we're doing in order to get the most interest savings um, today, the proposal is to combine the debt certificates for refinancing with the limited park bonds because we will have more bidders if we roll it into one versus trying to go out and refinance those debt certificates. Um, from what I understand and Eric can confirm, um, the market is not as strong there and we wouldn't realize as much savings. I will say um, and point this out, we don't know yet what our levy is looking like for next year, but we also do levy property taxes that flows through to our capital fund also, which in effect funds capital and also um, can indirectly fund those debt certificates. So um, while the intention is not to just load up the line item for debt, it accomplishes from a staff's perspective um, the most savings and the most efficient way to refinance these two instruments rather than doing them independently. Because that is an option, but um, it would not produce, as, as we're estimating, it would not produce the same amount of savings if we didn't combine that. Eric, anything to add? Hey, can you guys, and maybe it's just me, would you mind speaking a little louder um, in, in the room there? I, I, I can hear most of it, but it kind of cuts in and out. Is anyone else having issues hearing us? No, I can hear you fine. Yeah, no, it's sure. me on your end, Bill. It's me? Yeah. It's always me. I'm going to sign out and come back in then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Eric, do you want me to manually unmute you? Okay. Uh, I don't have that on my screen. Eric? Yes. Eric? Yes. Uh, we, we can hear you. We can hear you now. Thank you. Um, yeah, so everything that you said was, was correct, uh, especially when we are trying to place what is known as a forward settlement. We're trying to have a, an instrument that would be attractive to market participants. The limited park bond would be much more attractive and we think more successful in obtaining a forward settlement rate from bidders. Uh, that's the purpose. Back to Commissioner McBroom's uh, question of increasing the levy, you always have the ability to uh, abate a portion of the levy if you so chose. So while, it, while this would represent a modest increase in the district's levy for non-referendum bonds, uh, you have the ability to restrain that if you so choose. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Egan? I came in kind of at the back end of that, obviously. But if we were to pass the bonding resolution, could we attach a requirement that required full abatement of that portion going forward so future boards couldn't change their mind? Any, uh, Dirk, I'll, I'll see to you on this. No, you can't I Sorry, go ahead. tie the hands of future boards a little bit by having the debt issue, but you can't tie their hands in terms of fiscal management as things like COVID and other emergencies where you have to make fiscal choices happen. Uh, and so given the rules of the game, it's not the kind of thing where you can do it. It's uh, by uh, resolution or ordinance in tight of hands. All you can do is uh, make the recommendation that, uh, that the dollars be levied. So you can't, you can't tie their hands in that way. No. Any other um, questions, comments? Are there any residents or members of the public that wish to provide oral or written testimony concerning the proposal to issue general obligation limited tax park bonds? Let the record reflect there's nobody uh, with their uh, raising their hand virtually. So Bridget, has the district received any written or other type of correspondence regarding the proposed issuance of the general obligation limited tax bonds? Uh, no, we haven't. Thank you. With all persons desiring to be heard, been given an opportunity to present oral and written testimony regarding the proposal to issue general obligation limited tax park bonds. I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the hearing. Motion to adjourn the public hearing. Second. Second. Motion, motion by uh, Vice President King, second by Commissioner Riley. Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Next item on our agenda is matters from the public. The board will now receive public comment regarding non-agenda topics with those being submitted via voicemail, video, or email. Present first. Hold up. Eric wants to talk, I believe. Eric Anderson wants to talk. Sure. Eric, uh, the floor is yours. Sorry. Uh, the, the script that I had provided you has some key words in there. And the word is, uh, the, the hearing is finally adjourned. And I know that's uh, a minor point, but that is important to uh, say that where the meeting is now finally adjourned. 
Or the hearing is now finally adjourned. Sorry. Sir, do I just need something state that? Or just make the, let the record reflect that it's finally adjourned. Thank you. Let the record reflect that the uh, Vina hearing conducted just a moment ago is uh, finally adjourned. Thank you for that point of clarification. Yep. Thanks very much. Looks like we have We're going to finish these remarks. So as for uh, matters from the public, as stated a moment ago, the board will now receive public comment regarding non-agenda topics with those being submitted via voicemail, video, or email presented first, then from those that have joined remotely by virtually raising a hand. In order to raise your hand, if you're out there listening, please click on participants under meeting controls to access the option. Please wait to be recognized by the chair and note that comment is limited to three minutes per individual. The board will receive public comment regarding agenda items as each is being considered prior to board discussion of that item by the same procedure and also limited to three minutes. So Bridget, I'll turn it over to you. Or, or would you like to start here? Uh, I'll begin with emails. Sure. Um, First email from Adrian Bateau states, please keep fighting for us to open up. Our community needs this for health and wellness of both body and mind. Next, Anna Marie Bensfield states, I understand that there is a meeting this evening about a suit against Governor Pritzker for exceeding his constitutional authority in ordering park district policy. As a citizen of Naperville, I would like to see this, that outrageous decision legally appealed and move forward. Next from Aaron Broderick, well, I admire the tenacity of our board, and, and as much as I miss things as they were, as they where they were last summer, I do not support the continuance of appeals for the, the decision against a temporary restraining order against our governor's orders. I would like the decision to open high-risk activities to still be guided by our health department and governor. I believe Illinois is in a better place today than we would have been because of these orders, and I think that we are moving in a good direction. It's not the same as last summer, but I think it is realistic in a pandemic to continue to be guided by our health department, who are the scientists and physicians best able to speak on these matters. I personally hope our tax dollars will be spent in better ways than appeals. Next, from Roger Brown, as a 39-year resident and taxpayer of the Naperville Park District, I demand that the board appeal the suit challenge, challenging Governor Pritzker's regarding Park District authority. His arrogant, high-handed, and politicized orders clearly exceed his authority, strike a dangerous precedent if allowed to stand, and must be struck down. Next, from Shannon Brown. I vehemently oppose appealing the judge's order and the Park District Commission continuing to pursue this lawsuit. I oppose to continuing to waste any additional time or taxpayer money on this frivolous undertaking. It is disappointing to see the partisan nature of members of the commission who oppose the governor and seem to disagree with anything he orders. Their views are openly displayed in a variety of Facebook groups, and those posts clearly show that this is not at all about what's best for the Park District or the residents of Naperville, but instead is about advancing the views of the commissioners themselves. The commissioners suggest that this is about increased suicide and increased domestic abuse, that they offer no statistics from reputable government agencies that support these claims, frankly making the claim that somehow the lack of park facilities is correlated with teen suicide is offensive. It minimizes the complexity of suicide and mental health issues. It appropriates a sensitive and personal issue for the commissioner's own personal benefit and political agenda. And it aggrandizes the park commissioner's role as if it is somehow a necessary component in solving the public health issue. None of these park commissioners are qualified to speak on these issues, let alone build policy for them. Please let's leave these complex public health issues to the professionals. While many residents are disappointed that Centennial won't open this year, it was the right decision. Had it opened in any capacity other than adults only, my family would not have attended as there is simply no way to protect residents in that environment. And let's not forget about our first responders. Water rescues are dangerous under the best of circumstances. They take a long time and they must be completed without PPE. There is simply no reason to further endanger our police officers, EMTs, and firefighters who are already working long hours under difficult circumstances. In closing, I'm angered by the nature of my so-called representative's representation or lack thereof in my opinion and will act upon that frustration at the voting booth when their terms are up. In the meantime, I hope you will be a voice of reason who prevents this ridiculous lawsuit from advancing. Next, from Philip Buchanan. 
The board should be commended for continuing to operate within the applicable parameters of the governor's executive order. Your members and staff will thank you. The frivolous lawsuit is a waste of taxpayer money and should be dropped immediately. Next from Dan and Tina Bukowski. Board of Commissioners, please continue to pursue the legal action to open NPD. We are all counting on you to lead the way in appealing this unjust and unwarranted action by our governor. This is why we choose to live in Naperville. We are expecting sanity to rule and have the opportunity to make our own choices. If people are concerned, they do not have to visit the parks, but it should be left to the individuals to choose for themselves. Next, from Clementine Kaleja. I'm opposed to the Naperville Park District's board plan to waste even more taxpayers' money by fighting to appeal the judge's decision to reject your temporary restraining order. I don't believe you can further open up your facilities and programs while maintaining a safe and healthy environment for our community. Look at Arizona, Texas, and Florida as examples of states that reopened too soon, resulting in a surge of new coronavirus cases. I've lost five people to COVID-19 in my social circle. Almost all of them were healthcare workers caring for infected patients or the workers' relatives. Please help to keep our community safe and not create a situation that will further burden our healthcare workers and put them and us at further risk. I would like to have my email read. Next, Nancy Carbone. Please continue the fight against Governor J.B. Pritzker. We want you to know that ordinary people of Naperville want our voices heard and we thank and we want to open. We should not be lumped into Chicago and all their problems continue the effort. From Denise Catoni, during these challenging times, it is so important that decisions be made on a local level, not simply be dictated by the governor. This is why we have elections. Please continue your lawsuit to open the parks and other facilities ASAP. We have a son with Down syndrome who loves going to Naperville Beach and go to the parks. It's been a long winter, then the pandemic, yet our kids are not allowed to use the facilities that our taxes pay for. Other parts of the state have opened up their parks. We need to do the same. We would truly appreciate your efforts to allow our kids play outdoors. To be honest, I can't believe I just had to say that. Next, Kathy Christensen. Please continue to appeal the TRO and relief decision by the judge in your case to reopen the park district facilities and programs. Please continue to fight the governor on his overuse of emergency powers. It is important in the process to separate DuPage and Will from Cook County phases and timelines. We appreciate the wonderful work you've done to make Naperville great, and we hope that soon we can all enjoy our park district facilities and programs again. My son is missing Fort Hill basketball so much. From Kathy Connolly, open Naperville parks and stop Governor Pritzker from his orders to keep Naperville parks closed. Continue to fight against Governor J.B. Pritzker and open Naperville parks. From Ed Crotty, I ask the Republican members of the board, please give up this stunt, which is a waste of taxpayer dollars. Doubly a waste as the state has to defend incurring more legal costs. Judge Bonnie Wheaton is a lifelong Republican, so complaining or insinuating that her opposition is politically motivated is idiotic. I notice you're not suing Republican control to Page County for not issuing the permit, which makes your stunt even more transparent. Please stop wasting tax dollars on the stupidity. If you had the beach reclassified, the lat pool could be open. Instead, you put all your effort in into wasteful lawsuits. I asked the board publicly announce the cost of filing the original lawsuit and publicly announce an estimate of the cost of any lawsuit before voting on it. Do better. From Tom and Michelle Quick, the disappointment with the beef not opening is a huge loss to our family and friends. Today I was at work, I had a customer tell me her son is a firefighter and he has had calls about young adults under 18 taking their own lives because of the depression and zero outlet because school has been canceled, sports and unable to see friends, graduation. I had another friend tell me her grandson's friend who is eight years old with siblings wrote a letter because of feeling so alone at this time of COVID. Mental health will be the next pandemic if these children and adults have nothing to look forward to this summer. Even if the beach can only open from July 1st till September, it's better than nothing. Maybe make some exceptions and keep it open in September if the weather is nice. <coughs> My family is leaving Illinois weekly now for the mental health of our daughter with friends of ours so our children can enjoy a summer in the surrounding states. It's becoming our saying of tank of gas, cooler food, Gatorade, and sunscreen. We've taught our children not to touch their faces, to stay healthy. We wash our hands. Please go back to court to help Naperville. The hurt we all felt in June 1st from the destruction is living 
inside us right now. The joy of getting out to the beach, sitting there on the 4th of July towards the flag with all our neighbors is what I was looking forward to in July for all the hardships we have all faced in 2020. The beach will, with, the beach will bring us all together and try to move past this year and stay strong together. I ask with my heart to reconsider to open the beach. From Eugene Geeky, I support the MPD in its efforts to open our parks and encourage the board to vote to appeal the ruling that denied your injunction. Keep up the good fight. The citizens of Naperville deserve it and your efforts are appreciated. Please. Uh, from Lynn Gosselin, I've lived in Naperville for 22 years. Our family of five has enjoyed Naperville's parks, sports leagues, dance classes, and other course offerings. I've coached park district soccer for two of my three children. I understand that the board will be taking a vote on 611 on whether to appeal Judge Wheaton's decision to not grant a restraining order from governor's executive order. I strongly encourage you to vote against appealing the decision. I was disappointed that the park district voted to sue the governor to be exempt from the state's reopening guidelines. Naperville is a wonderful town, but we are not so special that we deserve our own set of rules when it comes to public safety and taxpayer money. Should, and taxpayer money should be allocated to address helping residents during this challenging pandemic. I've included a link to an article published in June 9th by the Washington Post. Key takeaways include that the rates of COVID diagnoses and COVID hospitalizations are increasing in the nine states that reopened broadly over Memorial Day weekend. In Arizona, the seven day average of new cases has increased to in 13 of the prior 15 days. Hospitalizations have increased 49% since Memorial Day. The Naperville Park District has a responsibility to adapt and safely meet residents' needs during this real new reality. In fact, the executive order does not prohibit Park District from creating new programming that meets the terms of the executive order. Taxpayer dollars should be directed at programming to address new and evolved needs for residents who are grappling with not only the pandemic, but also the nationwide reckoning with systemic racism. Leaders adapt, leaders create, leaders lead. I strongly encourage you to drop the appeal, stop politicizing the Park District, and put the health and safety of residents during this unprecedented time at the top of your priorities. From Linda Hansen, Governor Pritzker dismisses the Naperville Park District's desire to have local control of our parks and services, accusing us of using gut feelings instead of science and data. Here's actual data. According to the CDC, 81% of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States are people over 65 years old, mostly with pre-existing conditions. I think this is something that we, we are aware of and can agree on. Also from the CDC, the fatality rate for those under the age of 25 is 0. .00008 percent or roughly one in 1.25 million, yet we have shut down our schools, our daycare centers, our playgrounds, and our park district. That is the data. Actual science tells us that being outside is good for us. Vitamin D from the sun, fresh air, there are numerous studies on this. The CDC also reported that the virus doesn't last on surfaces, surfaces as long as they once thought and it doesn't thrive in sunshine. This is truly about science and data, and the science and data is right here. Let's not let fear get in the way of logic. From Liz. Hastings, I'm writing to express support to appeal the judge's decision regarding easing restrictions for the Naperville Park District. In light of all current protests going on, it seems absolutely ludicrous to block people from organized exercise and education, especially our children. The governor can join hundreds in protesting. Our community should be able to safely exercise with proper guidelines. Thank you for your continued efforts in getting our park district back up and running. I'm Jerry Heidi. From the onset of coronavirus panic, our elected officials have indicated that science will be the basis for implementing restrictions. We've recently seen this resilience on science relaxed in order to accommodate protests, social distancing, mask wearing, hand washing, etc., went the way of the dodo bird and continued to do so with no appraisals from our electeds. In fact, science does not support closing down outdoor pools, parks, shooting facilities, etc. The recent uh, WHO data review galvanizes this fact. I encourage you to vote to appeal the court decision that prohibits the reopening of the beach and other facilities. From David Herbst, Ray, do the right thing and stand up to the governor. Enough of interfering with our local communities. From Amy Jackson, please appeal this order and open up Centennial Beach and all of our pools. From Heather Jerkowski. My name is Heather Jerkowski and I'm a resident of Downers Grove. Even though I'm a resident of Downers Grove, I'm a mental health advocate in the community, including Naperville, and I have volunteered at the teen facility in your town called Live Center. And I was in the process of being trained as a peer leader at NAMI DuPage before the COVID-19 crisis hit our country. 
I'm a 44-year-old parent of two. I have a 12-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old son. I have bipolar disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and ADHD, and I was hospitalized by self-admission twice. My daughter also has mental health issues and has been hospitalized several times for suicidal idealizations and self-harm. I'm coming to you as a mother, an advocate, as a human being who has been receiving treatment for mental health issues for over 20 years. Naperville is a place with many resources for many people that live in the suburbs. The Naperville Park District holds the key to many of these successful resources for our children, especially children with mental health disabilities. I can tell you from my personal experience that every single doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist, and counselor that I and my daughter have seen have prescribed physical and social activity in order to alleviate our symptoms of depression and anxiety disorders. If you can put yourselves in my shoes for just a minute, imagine what it would be like to have your child come to you with bloody arms, glazed eyes, and tell you she wants to kill herself. Imagine having to make the call to Linda Noakes and taking your child's shoelaces out of her shoes and hoodie and dropping her off at a behavioral health facility. Then weeks and weeks of therapy, counseling, and part of that therapy prescribed your child to combat her suicidal idolizations is to join group activities, to not isolate herself, to be involved in a team environment in order to get her self-esteem lifted, to be in nature, and to go to swimming, go swimming with friends. Of course, you will do whatever it is you can to save your child's life, right? What if you go to get a prescription filled and the pharmacist tells you that they refuse to fill your daughter's prescription and you know that medicine behind the counter thinks is within arm's reach will save her life? That's what I'm doing with on a daily basis. Since school has been canceled, since activities have been canceled, since park districts have closed, since beaches like Centennial Beach have closed, my child has nothing to look forward to, no hope. Therefore, all the therapy, all the counseling, all the steps we have made forward are now back to the drawing board moments and quite frankly very scary because to this not just be an executive decision, but to my family and my Madeline and many other families who have visible disabilities like mine and my daughters, opening parks and beaches like those that Naperville has to offer are hers and other kids' lifelines, their prescriptions. Finally, I do not wish my circumstances upon anyone. I wish you all health and happiness. I believe it is necessary to go forward with any legal proceedings in order to open up your facilities because doing so would be in the best interest of our children's mental well-being. If children are to be isolated any longer and are to refrain from social interaction, the road ahead for many will be heartbreaking and devastating. Again, I am speaking from experience. Thank you for listening to my statement. From Ray Kinney. First of all, I wanted to thank you for your stand against the governor's plan for reopening and asking for local control, something I firmly agree with and am saddened the lawsuit is dismissed. As a father of three kids who all participated in a variety of partnership programs throughout their childhood, we all have such great memories of those experiences. As a matter of fact, it was Naperville Partnership Guide that convinced my parents to pick Naperville when we moved here in 1979. I'm very concerned for the health and mental well-being for our community's young people now more than ever. The Park District plays a vital role in the health and stability of our community and your hands have been tied by a never-ending and changing set of illogical rules and regulations. Every day we are learning that the experts have changed their minds, contradicted earlier edicts, and basically have proven why science always is a series of failed experiments along the way, much like it is called practicing medicine. Nothing is 100% accurate. Even early on, experts indicated the virus doesn't transmit well outdoors, and even the CDC now says it is not easily transmitted through surfaces. Which brings me to the point of this message. Please open all parks and playgrounds immediately. Appeal the court's decision. What do we have to lose? Every state around us is open. Indiana even open beaches and amusement parks. If you must change those signs to use at your own risk rather than close. I still believe in personal responsibility, and if I'm concerned for my safety, for whatever reason, I would make decisions that are best for me, including not going to a park. That does not mean that what I decide is what someone else should. So take those signs and recycle them, and let's play ball, soccer, cricket, frisbee, heck, even fall off the monkey bars and break an arm like my sister did as a kid, and guess what? We didn't sue anyone, and she is still alive today. I'm sure you've all seen the Mayor of Orland Park's video. But if not, it's worth a listen, uh, www.youtube.com, watch TV, L-Q-I-P-S-B-J-Q-R-M-S. None of these restrictions are logical any longer, but they are certainly political. I urge you to take a stand for recreation and take back control of our community. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your service to Naperville. From Gracia Libby. I believe Perry County should be open and support the Park District appealing court decision to allow them to open. We need individuals fighting and advocating for kids and families since during this pandemic, since no one else seems to be speaking up for children's rights and well-being. We believe the governor has overstepped. 
We know to make common sense decisions for our family, to have our kids wash their hands when it's finished, to finish our turn at the park if more people arrive and it becomes too busy, et cetera. Thank you. Allison Longenbaugh. I was relieved to hear that the judge denied the park district's case to sue the governor over the stay at home orders. Please do not waste any taxpayer dollars appealing. A better use of the park district time and dollars would be would be to figure out how to better serve our community within the constructs of the guidelines. Given the recent events in our country, the Park District would play a pivotal role in creating a more inclusive community for our marginalized residents. Divert those dollars you waste on a lawsuit to offer programs and safe spaces for children who are truly abused and to residents affected by racism in our town. Change will be coming to our community and the Park District is so concerned with being sidelined during the pandemic that get on the field and quarterback the coming change be an ally to the government and help lead it. Jane Lutke, please continue to fight Governor Pritzker in order to reopen our parks. From Kevin Malley, please continue to fight against the governor to open parks in Naperville. From Bradford Miller, please continue to fight against our governor. I think the residents of Naperville support the reopening of the parks and sports. To illustrate the lunacy of all this, I suggest you watch the video from the mayor of Orland Park, which you can find on YouTube. He clearly points out how these guidelines and rules don't make any sense. We need to get back to normal. From Tim Monsoon, please don't back down from the governor and open our parks now. A town like Naperville should be fighting for the rights of its residents. If people don't want to use the parks, they are free to stay home. It is clear from the crowds on the trails that people are ready and anxious to utilize our fine facilities. From Karen Peck, I'm asking the Naperville Park District to drop the appeal to the judge's decision on Naperville Park health and safety as determined by the governor's orders. I do not think it's appropriate to spend more taxpayer money on an effort that is in defiance of Illinois Public Health's best advice. I ask that you disclose the amount of taxpayer money already spent. We have a right to know. I want to mention that social media likes and love should not be counted as official approval. Letters, calls, and emails from constituents should. Please stop fanning the flames of the division in the neighborhood between the open now and follow scientific guidance camps, guidelines, guidelines camps. During a pandemic, it is more important to unite the community rather than divide it. Not being able to do all the things we love this summer is awful. Pandemics are awful. That's not the fault of the governor, and it's also not in the best interest of Naperville, Naperville residents to follow the advice of politicians over those of the health officials that have guided Governor Pritzker. He is elected by this county, and the majority stands with him. Facebook page comments on partisan pages are not representative of the majority who made our wishes known at the ballot box. From Kevin Pickett, I'm not one to normally send emails into elected officials when it comes to asking for anything. However, this is something that I feel passionate about now, and I want to express my opinion as a longtime taxpayer and volunteer in Naperville. First, I appreciate the job you all do as park commissioners, and I know you personally work very hard to make the park district the great organization it is today. I also know that you have one of the finest leaders around running the organization in Ray McGurry. Thank you for having the courage to stand up for the taxpayers. It took a lot of guts and strong leadership. I was completely content sitting on the sidelines for this until I saw the cover of Online Chicago Tribune yesterday morning with a picture of Governor Pritzker completely ignoring his own social distancing rules that he has put in on the citizens of Illinois. It was bad enough when he let his family completely ignore the stay-at-home order earlier, but this is way over the top for me. On one hand, he's telling us we can't do. On the other hand, he is doing exactly what he told us not to do. He was not six feet apart in this photo. He didn't have gloves on, and there were more than 10 people around him, which is the rule in phase three, to name a few. I'm sick and tired of the double standard politicians from both sides in the aisle doing what they please when they want and going completely unchecked, enough is enough. Just to be clear, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. I'm an independent voter who's voted for candidates on both sides of the aisle in many elections. I understand you guys lost your fight in the restraining order to fully open the parks again, and now you have the opportunity to appeal. I respectfully request that you exercise that right to appeal on behalf of the taxpayers. Double standards need to stop, and if we don't see a spike in COVID after these past couple of weeks of the large protests, then we should go right to phase five, in my opinion. I say this on the heels of the news that parks will remain closed for phase three, and that Centennial Beach will not open at all this summer. Don't let the governor completely gut your mission on organizations, which is we provide recreation park experiences that promote healthy lives, healthy minds, and healthy community. Unfortunately, the governor is not letting you carry out your own miss mission. I understand the argument that this is costing taxpayers money to fight. But right now, our money isn't going to support the many programs you offer, as most are happening, and those that are aren't happening in the way they're intended to. 
Please strongly consider appealing Judge Wheaton's decision who should recuse herself after her social media post on May 2nd showing bias against opening up. To quote country music singer Aaron Tippin, you've got to stand up for something or you will fall down, fall for anything. The only way to stand up for what is right is to keep fighting. Thank you for your time and consideration. From Lisa Pinto. As a psychologist in Naperville for 30 years, I bear witness to the devastating effects isolation has on our mental health. Not having the ability to cope by going to parks, health clubs, social activities has greatly contributed to suicide rates and cause increasing to levels never seen before. If I can safely go to a Costco, I can safely go to a park or gym. One person's death by suicide affects 60 others. The one consistent risk factor for COVID survival is being unhealthy. Please restore our social recreation activities so that we can all stay healthy emotionally and physically. From Stephanie Randall. I applaud your recent actions to contest the governor's shutdown ruling that prevented the park district from making its own decisions, specifically when to reopen your own programming. It's so important for our community, businesses, organizations, and individuals to make decisions at a local level, not dictated by the governor. I was frustrated, saddened to hear that Judge Wheaton denied your request as the governor's ruling wasn't lawful to begin with and Judge Wheaton should uphold the law. I urge you to encourage you I urge you to, and encourage you to appeal Judge Wheaton's decision and demand your authority not be taken from you. Neighborville citizens must maintain freedom to decide for themselves what activities to participate in, including Park District programming. From Stephanie Raquel. Re Re Writing today to implore you to please appeal the circuit judge's decision to deny the TRO and to urge you to continue to fight for control of opening our parks in Centennial Beach. There is no logical or scientific explanation that 200 plus people would lose their jobs at Centennial Beach and an entire swim season and multiple water polo seasons should be canceled. If the reason given is that there's a virus out there, keep in mind there has been a virus out there every summer since the parks first opened. Are there bigger travesties in life than losing one's job in the middle of a recession and forcibly being removed from many friends and family for a full summer through no fault of your own? Yes, of course, no one is disputing that. But I would also urge you to consider the potential upside for defending our great city and its freedoms. Consider the leadership, training, and work ethic potential for hiring our youth. Consider the economic potential and charitable causes that can be supported through steady paychecks. Consider growing the social capital and sphere of influences through friendships forged and personal goals set and achieved. Lastly, consider the boost to our community's physical, emotional, and mental health. Economic shutdown over this disease is only supposed to take place over 14 days. Now that we are three plus, plus months into it, we know a great deal more than we did back in March, including the fact that this disease dies off in chlorine sunlight, has very limited outdoor spread, it doesn't live on long surfaces, and the fact that Centennial Beach is in a county with 82% of fatalities occurring in nursing homes. You're smart enough and know better now than to make decisions strictly based on limited knowledge we had three to four months ago. Again, please keep fighting for our parks, our children, and our families by appealing this decision. We deserve it, and so do you. Grateful for your consideration. From Kelly Ridges, I'm ready to ask you to vote yes to appeal the judge's decision regarding control of opening our parks in a time that is best for Naperville. I am a 20-year resident of Naperville and a practicing nurse practitioner with over 20 years of experience. Most of my career has been focused on pediatrics. Currently, I work in an office treating children and adults, allergy, immuno, and immun immunology needs in Naperville. The past few weeks, I have left work extremely sad and worried about the children in our community. My concern most days brings me to tears. The amount of depression I am encountering in my pediatric patients is terrifying. Kids are scared, lonely, and having a very difficult time with these lockdowns. The amount of kids being put on antidepressants is like nothing I've seen in my 20 year career. Kids need their parks for their mental well being. They need that bit of normalcy. We need Centennial Beach to keep our teenagers out of trouble. We need playgrounds for young children to burn off energy. I'm confident that years from now, the mental health problems that have been endured with these lockdowns will far exceed the troubles of COVID. Just look into capacity levels at Lynch and Oaks. For my colleagues, they are turning patients away due to being at capacity. Please fight to open our beautiful parks and save our children's mental well-being. From Adam Rousseau, as a neighborhood resident and mental health provider, the fact that our parks and pools are not yet open is appalling. We are told not to gather in groups of 10 or more. We're told to wear masks. We're told businesses and public facilities must, must follow certain rules in order to reopen. 
But for the past 10 days, we've seen tens of thousands of people gathered together to protest for the right reasons, and that has been acceptable from a COVID perspective. We must take a side. Either COVID is life-threatening for everyone and the rules must be followed regardless of the motivation to go against them, or COVID isn't as threatening as we believed and we need to allow people to get back to their normal lives. Both cannot be simultaneously true. Further, living in this dissonant dissonance is only hurting the mental and physical well-being of the logical kids and adults watching what is transpiring. And if you're against this, all you're succeeding in doing is per perpetrating the myth that there is a way to 100% reduce risk in our society. The lowest the current chart of COVID death by age is reported by the CDC. The elderly and those who have pre-existing conditions should take precautions as they so choose. If you think this chart shows too much risk, then you should never get in a car again because the risk there is much higher. We should open up. It's been three months. Our phones are ringing off the hook with anxiety riddled people. There's no reason for this. Thank you for listening and your service to Gabriel. From John Scanlon, I ask that you please continue fighting Governor Pritzker's ridiculous lockdown and appeal the recent decision. From Catherine Schleyer, as a lifelong resident of Naperville, I'm saddened that we can't enjoy our pool this summer. I have many happy memories from my childhood and was looking forward to making new memories with my family. It is okay with me that the pool is closed. I would rather be sad about not having the privilege of going to the pool than be sad about losing my neighbors due to COVID-19. I do understand that not opening up the pool and other facilities will impact the seasonal workers and park district revenue. Illinois is working to provide financial support to those workers impacted by COVID-19. Please accept the judgment and do not continue to pursue this lawsuit. From Heather Schmidt, I'm writing as I am so tired of what is happening in this state. I know you lost your temporary order against the governor. Please keep fighting. What is going to happen to these kids with nothing open? I see them on the streets lost as they have no sports, no place to hang out, stand firm. I hope more people stand up for what is right. How dare one person decide what we should do as a community? Send out a survey so people can say what they want. District 203 just did that. My kids need activity. They need to see people. Their mental health depends on it. We are counting on you. Stand firm. From Renata Sliva, please continue to fight to reopen the beach. My kids are all grown up now, but when they were younger, I spent most summer afternoons at the beach. I can't imagine what the parents are to do, especially if they have small apartment house and basically there is nowhere to go in hot summer days as most of the usual activities are out of reach because of the governor's orders and guidelines. From Stephen Smith, I'm writing to urge you to continue the effort to reopen Governor Pritzker's executive orders have not had basis in law. His legal authority ended on April 9th. In addition to the governor, Pritzker has shown complete disregard for his own phase three guidelines by attending protest rallies where thousands of people were in attendance ignoring all of the guidelines. This is, a, it, this is complete hypocrisy. Please continue your effort to end this illegal, illegal activity on the behalf of the governor. From Jenny sumner Witcher, please continue the fight against Governor Pritzker's unrealistic opening plan. We need to do everything possible to help our communities prosper. From Riley Tomlinson, I live in Naperville in the Breckenridge neighborhood and have been a resident for the past four years. One of the things I've enjoyed so much is the access to all the parts of the facilities that this community has and it is what inspired my wife and four children to come to this community. As I understand we are in different times, I also understand that we need to allow our local officials and not the governor make the decisions on what is best for community. As we, can, as we all can make decisions personally on what we want to do or not do, we don't need the governor dictating our lifestyles, which is why we live in America, which is home of the free. On a side note, and something to consider even further on this situation, we are now in because we can't play in our own state. My son plays for the Naperville Renegades, and we are in Iowa playing in a baseball tournament this past weekend. We had three teams from Naperville Renegades playing out there, over 100 family members, because we couldn't play here. We were actually scheduled to play in Peoria, but given we are closed, we had to go out of state. This weekend, we are traveling once again out of state to Wisconsin to play because we are shut down. It's really a sad situation given not only are we having to travel, the state is losing on revenue it could have had from all those canceled events. The stores around our parks, the hotels where folks stay, the restaurants where we eat, all lost to states who are open and have good guidelines on how the teams can play. Thank you again and keep the faith. I ask you to keep fighting for us and appreciate your time and consideration. From Nancy Turner, once again, we are dismayed the park district's desire to waste our property taxes and to increase our state taxes if the board votes to continue this lawsuit. 
The first effort resulted in a complete waste of money when the lawsuit was denied. This new proposed effort is a continued waste of money. By the time it is resolved, the state will most likely be in the next phase given the low positivity rates we are experiencing. We would like to know how much of our tax dollars have been spent already on this lawsuit and how many more tax dollars do you plan to, plan to waste on this political stunt. If the Park District really wanted public opinion, there would be a survey, for example, on the Park District's website. Instead, some of the commissioners seem to be relying on Facebook likes and comments of support by choosing the group that would give the answer they want to hear. We await the financial disclosure about the cost of this lawsuit. I'm Jessica Wagner. I'm writing this email to you to encourage you to keep fighting for our city. I would like for my comment to be read in public as well. Opening the Naperville Park District is very important for our community in many ways. One being for physical health, but also just as important for the mental health of the residents of Naperville. The governor's stance on reopening is not the direction I would like to see Naperville going. It is nonsense to have us looped in with Chicago. We've struggled long enough in this month's end. Please help make this right. From John Wagner. As a 17-year Naperville resident, I support NPD's efforts in their lawsuit against the state of Illinois and appealing the ruling on the temporary restraining order. The governor continues to enact policies veiled in claims of following the science data, but has provided scant evidence along the way. Further, the governor has run unchecked by a state legislature that has failed to serve its constituents. In fact, numerous statements made and orders issued have been false at best, deceptive at worst. Fortunately, we live in an era where data is readily available. Let's review some facts. The decision to group the color counties with EMS 11 Chicago has been highly debated. The idea that this grouping lacks statistical support is not opinion, we know is true. The latest figures clearly show the disparity of the virus's prevalence between Chicago and the surrounding counties on both an absolute and population adjusted basis. Further, it's worth noting the strong performance in managing the virus in counties like DuPage and Will, despite the relatively larger populations. Not only should these communities be free to make the best decision for themselves independent of Chicago, they should be free to make decisions independent of each other. One might now call this the Wisconsin plan. On May 11th, the governor did give Illinois a peek into his science and data. After three straight days of rapidly declining new positives, the governor stated dejectedly and seemingly inexplicably new modeling data showed the state's cases would not peak until mid-June. And almost as if on cue, the next day, Illinois recorded, recorded a single high in new cases. But little did the governor know, maybe, maybe not, the May 12 would be the peak. From that point, new cases have trended down significantly and most recently very rapidly. And the key marker of rising test volume combined with false positivity rates have carried their respective desired trends since that date. If anything, the state is continuing to deny or limit access to public spaces, including our parks and the vital health and social programs they offer, at a time that is critical, we have more access to public health resources. After months of being locked indoors, our tax-supported parks are key to our community's physical and mental well-being. So if our state legislature won't defend our interest to provide full access to our parks, but another body whose members I vote for and whose budgets my taxes support will, how can I not support you in this effort? More importantly, given the weak and unchallenged support for these orders, how can the board not vote any other way than unanimously to fight on? As I stated above, fortunately, we live in an era where data is ready, are readily, readily available. The residents in the district are paying attention. 2021 and 2023 may seem a long way off, but they aren't. Many states are showing parks can open up safely, including the states that have abandoned Illinois in what was supposed to be a partnership to coordinate reopening. To science and data not cross state lines, we can't allow ourselves to be stuck in time. Please keep pushing toward, forward with your legal efforts and know Naperville is behind you. From Mark Wagner, the city needs to reopen. As a teenager, I have very low risk of this virus. It is unfair to the youth of the city to be restricted for something very low risk. Why should we wear masks when we social distance? Why should we social distance when we wear masks? It is time for change in a positive direction. We need to become somewhat normal again. From Jen Wagner. Thank you for working so hard to help separate our community from Chicago and the court systems. I know this isn't an easy fight, but it's well worth it. Fight not to get lumped into the governor's reopening plan. Please continue your fight. Your community appreciates all you are doing. Please and thank you. From Eric Wooten, you have our support in continuing the legal fight to open up the park district. From Ryan Worsley, Please feel free to read my comments into the record. My wife and I have four kids, nine, seven, five, and three. For further info, we are currently visiting our family in Georgia and it's different work 
a different world here, very open and normal. Those who want to wear masks and stay inside can do so. Those who want to get out and live can do so. It's been so healthy and life-giving to leave Illinois for these few days. We will be sad to return to lockdowns. Please, please, please continue to fight. Our kids' futures demand it. From, um, that's the end of the email. I have a voicemail. Hi, I'm Jody Berry. This is Jody Sally. I am an Abraham resident and voter, and I am calling to urge the Abraham Park District to stop wasting taxpayer money with a frivolous lawsuit. Um, I understand that there will be a vote tomorrow on whether or not to proceed with this, and it, it, it's a fruitless effort. Also, um, I care very much about the health of, and public safety of people in this um, city and, uh, and our hospitals being overrun. And I just think that this, this is silliness and there's about a million other things we can spend our tax dollars on. And this is not one of them. So um, I would love it if you would explain my remarks tomorrow during the meeting. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Mr. Regarding. Yep. Awesome. Uh, we have three people raised to, with their hands raised. I'll go in order. Uh, Robin Whitlock. Um, I will go ahead and. Uh, yep, go ahead. Hi, Robin. Can you hear us? Yes, absolutely. Can you so, please, um, can you I'm Robin. State, can you please state your name and your uh, and your home address, and then you'll have three sure. minutes. Yes, so my name's Robin Whitlock. Um, I live at 1616 Red Pole Court in Naperville. Um, we have been Naperville residents for 19 years. Um, and I've been listening carefully to this back and forth. Um, and I do feel strongly that honestly, we all want the same thing. We all want to keep our residents healthy. We want to keep our kids healthy. Um, I fully supported the, the shutdown in March. Um, there was a lot that we didn't know about COVID and I did not want to see our hospitals overrun like they were in Italy um, and other places in the world. Um, and I'm thrilled that we did flatten the curve. We achieved that goal and I'm proud of Naperville um, for how we worked together to do that. But we know so much more now than we did in March and I feel strongly that it's time to let kids play at the park. We, we need local control over these decisions, and I urge the park district to continue to fight um, to maintain that control. Uh, the city of Naperville has strong and intelligent leaders that I fully trust to make decisions for the well-being of our community, and I think that those decisions need to be made within our community. Um, I fully support anyone who chooses to not participate and not go to the park and to stay home. Um, I get it. I, I'm just a mom who, um, who's saying the kids are not okay. They're not okay. My kids aren't okay and other kids aren't okay. Um, and I feel like it's time to start to get back to, to normal. Thank you. Robin, thank you very much. Uh, up next is Bruce Hansen. Hello. Uh, th hi, this is Bruce Hansen. Uh, I live at 840 Woodbine Court in Naperville. Um, we've lived here for 20 years. Uh, I've been a very active community member, and I probably have about six or seven years as a volunteer coach for the Naperville Park District for my own children. I think it's extremely important, and I urge all of the commissioners to please continue the legal action against the governor to reopen our parks and our pools. You know, uh, there's plenty of question as to, you know, the, the recent court decision um, on the blocking of the temporary restrain, restraining order. I think there's some interesting comments that were made by the judge that right on its own surface is enough merit uh, to um, require, frankly, an appeal. You don't start any legal action if you don't intend to com complete your legal action and, and follow it all the way through. Um, and that's just on the surface of the, the recent court action, uh, let alone the validity of our claim. And I think that it's important that you move forward with the appeal um, so that we can be fairly and impartially heard. 
Um, we, we, we've been told uh, that the goalpost keeps moving in terms of science. Um, everybody who knows me knows I'm not a scientist, but I do rely on the same public information that is released. And recently, the World Health Organization, at least one person who is an authorized spokesperson, clarified that asymptomatic infection is extremely rare and also reinforced the fact that the virus does not uh, seem to survive well in heat nor in contact with chlorine. We've also been told, uh, and all of us seem to be very well aware, that we should be socially distancing and wearing masks. And I think the fact that if we were to reopen our parks and pools uh, does not require anyone to attend those parks and pools. Um, you uh, have the option to stay away, and if that's the most important uh, decision for you and your family, then, uh, then that's fine. Um, no one requires any of us to do anything. Um, but but right now we're all required to stay away from the parks and pools and I think that's a big part of the problem. So we should allow our families, our parents to decide what's safe, not the governor. We elected local officials to uh, analyze our situation locally. And um, I think it's extremely important that uh, we lead in our state. Naperville is a city that is an exemplar to other cities. And we know that there are other states as we're um, pointed out in some of the, the comments already in the record that have successfully implemented reopening plans. So it's time for us to do the same. And Naperville Park District really is an exemplar in moving forward uh, in our state. So it's, in, it's really critical then that we move forward with legal action and protect our local right to decide. So I urge you to do that. And thank you very much for uh, giving me this time. Thank you, Bruce. All right, up next is Carrie Wagner. Hi there, can you hear me okay? Yes, Carrie. Okay, great. My name is Carrie Wagner. I live at 3835 Mandeville Lane. I've been a resident of Naperville for 17 years. Um, I am a mom to an 18-year-old daughter and a 15-year-old son. And back when my kids were younger, the day the Naperville Park District program came in the mail was a very exciting day in my house. Not only because of the kids looking forward to the classes that were offered, it was probably even just as exciting for me as a tired full-time stay-at-home mom. These summer programs provided my kids with opportunities to explore different interests that included sports, art, and dance. Fast forward 10 years later, because of my daughter's exposure to dance early on through the park district, she continued her dance competitively and with her high school. Her love of dance grew over the years thanks to her early exposure. More importantly, she learned discipline and confidence, which are crucial lessons for young girls. Now I wanna talk about my son. Through the Park District sports camps, he discovered his love for baseball. His interest in the game as a five-year-old has grown into full-blown passion. Baseball has provided him with crucial lessons in teamwork, confidence, and handling failure. He continues to play high school and travel, and his passion has only grown. I am beyond thankful for the Park District's programs that you guys provided for my kids when they were younger. Here we are, dealing with a crisis, and it's summertime. Kids have been stripped of anything and everything they've looked forward to, not to mention they've been cooped up in the house for months. The opportunities that the Park District offers could not come at a more needed time. Other states are successfully showing that parks can open up safely. Our state and our governor continue to enact ridiculous practices that follow science and data. However, he doesn't really provide that when he's asked for it. Remember when our governor claimed a couple weeks ago that Illinois would hit the peak mid-June? Well, guess what? It's mid-June, and our cases of deaths and positive cases are the lowest since the beginning of all this in March. And now we can see that we peaked weeks ago. My point is this, they don't know. They are guessing. The ones caught in the middle are our youth. They need to expand their brain, their body, and to be kids. And because of these poorly informed decisions, there is a young mom out there, much like I was 10 years ago, who now is unable to enroll her kid in a program that fits their needs and to help develop their passions. Because it's either been eliminated, has limited capacity, or it's been accepted in a virtual fashion with none of the social benefits. Most importantly, these programs are voluntary. No one is being forced to take them. But despite the fact Naperville families are facing reduced or eliminated programs, our taxes that support these programs remain the same, whether we use the parks or not. My children are older. They are more concerned with the ridiculous closure of Centennial Beach. Most of these programs we have outgrown, yet I have no problem paying taxes to support the programs that we once were lucky enough to take advantage of. However, there is no justification to ask any Naperville family to pay some, the same taxes while limiting access to the parks 
for reasons that we know now, three months into this crisis, are just false. This nonsense has gone on long enough. There is no reason that Naperville parks cannot open up safely and not waste any more time. And I just wanna add one thing, cause I, I clearly read that. Robin Whitlock made a statement that really resonates with me. And she's right, kids are not okay. My kids are doing okay, but generally kids are not okay. And they really need parks and they need to be out and they need fresh air and it's time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have uh, Gerard H. Schilling. Mr. Schilling, can you hear us? Yes, I can, thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, it's a little bit faint, um, but I think we can hear you. Okay, I, 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 I've never used this system before. I tried to turn the camera on, but it's not, it's obviously not working. Long story short, you guys have had a, you know, a hard time. I've listened to the pros and cons. I'm neither a doctor nor a lawyer, but the question I have to you, and you don't need to answer it, is do you have the authority to open up all of your facilities unrestricted and uh, immediately and allow then the state and or the county to take whatever action it wants to take or thinks it might want to take instead of worrying about you know appealing this decision my suggestion recommendation is that you guys stand up uh, get counted and do what's right for your the people of, uh, for the neighborville taxpayers of which i am one and by the way i live at 908 carlson court and i've been a resident of this town for 36 years and actively participated in all of the park district functions uh, throughout that time period. And you guys do a great job and I appreciate it, but I think you ought to stand up and be counted. And I think you ought to open these systems up and let them do whatever they want to do to try to stop you. Thanks for your help. Thanks for listening to this for an hour and a half. And uh, again, I know you know all the pros and cons both ways. Thanks again, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Okay, and I don't see anybody else uh, with their hand raised. <clears throat> At this time, I don't see anybody else with their hand raised. So uh, last call, so to speak, if there's anyone out there who'd like to make a public comment, please virtually raise your hand right now. Seeing nobody, that will conclude our uh, public comment for this evening. And we'll move on to item four on our agenda, updates and reports. The first report is the Riverwalk Commission update. Commissioner Carlson, you have anything this evening? Not this evening, thank you. Thank you. Next is the Parks Foundation. Vice President King, anything this evening? No report. Thank you. Next, uh, Finance Committee. Commissioner Carlson? No, we have not met since last time. Thank you. Commissioner uh, McBroom, anything on legislative committee this evening? No report. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Committee, Commissioner Riley, anything this evening? No report. Thank you. Next report is the uh, Board President's report. During my uh, report this evening, I'd like to provide some updates with regard to the Naperville Park District status in the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak and the related litigation. I share this primarily for the benefit of anyone listening that may not be familiar with the full background or this timeline. As always, and I'd like to underscore this, the commentary portions of my report represent my own opinions and do not necessarily reflect the opinion of this body or the Naperville Park District. During our May 14th meeting, this board decided by a 4-3 vote to file suit against Governor Pritzker in an attempt to gain control of reopening decisions here locally. The intent was not to fully reopen every program and amenity immediately. Rather, a key objective was to achieve local control of decision making, which I would offer we have been very successful with over the past several years. 
For example, the Naperville Park District maintains a AAA bond rating and has for over 10 years, which is indicative of superior decision making in the area of finance. A AAA bond rating is the highest possible rating assigned by independent rating agencies. Conversely, it has been reported that Illinois bonds rank just one notch above junk status and are rated among the lowest of any state in the country. This speaks volumes about our state's track record for quote unquote data driven decision making. I think most Naperville residents would prefer to see park district decisions made locally by people that reside in our community and answer directly to this community. Our executive director Ray McGurry has over 30 years of experience in public service and our director of recreation Brad Wilson has over 20 years of experience in the recreation field. We have an elected board and informed citizenry and tremendous resources in our community with Edward Hospital right here, along with DuPage and Will County. Fast forward to May 19th. On May 19th, late in the afternoon, our complaint was filed in the Naperville Park District versus Governor Pritzker case. Less than 24 hours later, at 3.05 p.m. on May 20th, we received a memo from the governor's press office that appeared to be a statewide memo. Within that memo, Less than 24 hours later, the following topics were covered. Golf foursomes, golf carts, golf driving ranges, outdoor fitness classes, outdoor activities, outdoor shooting ranges, gyms, fitness studios, skate parks, concessions, tennis facilities. Now I suppose one could argue that it's simply a coincidence that all of these topics important to the Naperville Park District were addressed by the governor's office less than 24 hours after receiving our complaint. But I think if you just look a little bit beneath the surface, it's rather apparent that none of this was a coincidence. Elected officials at any level are in fact swayed by public pressure and react to public pressure, which is why we have received hundreds of emails on this topic. In short, oftentimes the squeaky wheel gets some oil. So the Naperville Park District's actions in this case have already made a significant difference. We got more than a little oil for our residents on May 20th. The governor threw us a bone. In terms of trying to quantify that impact, I did some research and learned that the Naperville Park District from May 29th to the present time took in about $82,321 in revenue from golf foursomes, previously prohibited. About $35,970 in revenue from golf carts, previously limited to only golfers with a medical or physical requirement. About $20,572 in revenue from golf driving ranges, previously prohibited, and about $4,149 in revenue from outdoor fitness classes, previously prohibited. All in about $143,000 in new revenues, which will drastically eclipse any legal fees. So it appears that based upon the governor's office apparently addressing our concerns, again, within 24 hours, that we have already received a handsome return on our investment in legal fees, not to mention the fact that our residents were able to get outdoors and enjoy those amenities that are connected with our mission. And not to mention, all the other park districts across the state and their residents also received these benefits. Our vision statement calls for us to be a leader. On June 5th, a judge denied our motion for a temporary restraining order, which was a setback in our case. While I didn't agree with that decision, I certainly respect it, and I respect the judicial process. The Naperville Park District continues to follow the Restore Illinois plan as outlined by the governor. Everything we are opening is in compliance with the plan, and we are not defying any orders. On June 9th, the Naperville Park District announced that the 2020 Centennial Beach season has been canceled because we were denied a permit for Centennial Beach operations during phase three of the governor's Restore Illinois plan. Despite no compelling evidence that COVID-19 can be transferred via chlorinated water, this popular community amenity and Naperville icon will remain closed and approximately 200 part-time staff people will be out of a job. A multi-million dollar asset that belongs to this community closed. Lots of young people denied employment. Playgrounds also remain closed. Tonight, the board will discuss its options with regard to the case and provide our legal counsel with direction for how to proceed. 
It is neither prudent nor appropriate to discuss the details of our current litigation or a conference with legal counsel about this in open session. For this reason, we'll adjourn to executive session for this discussion, which is permissible under the Open Meetings Act. Shifting gears, I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to our own Naperville Park Police officers for their role in protecting the assets of the Park District and helping maintain law and order this month in the face of rioting, looting, and criminal behavior, the likes of which I have never seen before around here. I'd also like to thank the Naperville Police Department and all other law enforcement agencies that came in to assist and help restore law and order. Finally, for those listening that may not be familiar with our board policies, our board has an annual meeting, including officer elections each June, and it has been our custom for the board president to pass the torch during the first meeting of June. While having stability and continuity of leadership with our executive director, legal counsel, and senior staff is advantageous for the district, I believe the district benefits from different elected officials taking a turn and serving as board president. I'd like to thank my fellow commissioners for the opportunity to serve as your president this past year. I sincerely appreciate the trust and confidence you placed in me and enjoy being of service to you and the community in this capacity. Thank you. I'll turn it over to you, Executive Director McGurry, for your report. Uh, thank you, President Janner. Uh, the 95th Street Farmers Market opened last week and will be open each Thursday this summer from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, just to say, you know, we had over 700 people attend today. Um, and that's in the parking lot of the 95th Street Library located at uh, 3015 Cedar Glade Drive. We thank our returning and new vendors who are offering fresh fruits and vegetables, organic meat and eggs, and a variety of other items. Check neighborableparks.org backslash farmers market for the safety guidelines and a list of our vendors. The paddle boat quarry is now open, daily <coughs> from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Safety guidelines are posted at neighborableparks.org and reservations may be made on site as well. Enjoy a unique summer boating experience right in downtown Naperville. And finally, the Park District is offering activities for many ages and interests this summer with registration now in progress. The first week of our summer uh, camps begins Monday, Jan uh, June 15th, following the Phase 3 Restore Illinois plan with smaller groups, modified activities, and social distancing gu guidelines in place. Registration is in progress and will continue throughout the, the summer. Port Hill Fitness has launched some fun new outdoor fitness classes is offering a one-on-one -on -one personal training at the, the, the Fort Hill uh, Center. Our um, eSports um, league is back in, uh, for the summer with open registration through June 14th. And finally, just a reminder that it's time to register for the fall season of our Naperville soccer. To learn more uh, and register for any of these programs, please visit naprovilleparks.org. Thank you, Executive Director McGurry. Next, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Bridget, can you please read the items on the uh, consent agenda for consideration tonight? Item 5.1, approve May 2020 disbursements in the amount of $1,366,887.83. 5.2, approve May 2020 disbursements made through the Bank of America Purchasing Card Program in the amount of $170,891. 5.3, approve May 2020 disbursements made through the FinTech electronic payment system in the amount of $789. 5.4, approve May 2020 customer refunds in the amount of $21,557.64. 5.5, approve May 20, 2020 regular meeting minutes. 5.6, approve May 14, 2020 executive session closed meeting minutes. 5.7, approve May 28, 2020 executive session closed meeting minutes. 5.8, approve the contract for restoring the shoreline on the east end of Cloud Creek Greenway to Midwest Ecological Services, Inc. in the amount of $60,057. And 5.9, approve revised Naperville Personnel Policies 08-03, your right to know, and 08-05, Communicable Disease Policy. Thank you. Are there any items to remove from the consent agenda? Mission Regan? 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, and 5.5, please. The others? Hearing none, uh, at this time, we will entertain a motion to accept consent agenda items 5.4 and 5.6 through 5.9. 
Move to accept consent items 5.4 through 5.6 through 5.9. Motion, uh, Vice President King, second Commissioner Riley. Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Great job, Mike. I agree. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Janet? Yes. Next, we'll entertain a motion to approve consent agenda items, the same items 5.4 and 5.6 through 5.9. Move to approve consent agenda items 5.4, 5.6 through 5.9. Second. Motion, uh, Vice President King, second. Commissioner Todd, we'll, we'll give it one. We're taking a roll call on our picture. Roll call on our picture. Yeah, no. uh, this is, Did we change the direction? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so voice vote. This is a voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Next, we will move on to unfinished business and we'll entertain a motion to approve the May 2020 disbursements in the amount of $1,366,887.83. So moved. Motion, uh, Vice President King, we have a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Riley. Any discussion on this one? Commissioner Egan? My standard no vote for the 4% raises, thank you. Any other discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Next, we'll entertain a motion to approve the May 2020 disbursements made through the Bank of America Purchasing Card Program in the amount of $173,891. So moved. Second. Motion, uh, Vice President King, second Commissioner Riley. Any discussion, Commissioner Egan? Um, this is a new one for me. I, I thought it was relevant to point out that uh, budgeting 4% raises puts pressure on an item like this. Uh, and, and handing out raises less than 4%, but still a twice the rate of CPI, is certainly going to continue to burden these ne necessary and daily expenses. I will support the, the expenditure, but I think that's relative to point out. Thank you. Any other discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McGrone? Yes. Mr. Todd? Yes. President Jan? Yes. Next, we'll entertain a motion to approve the May 2020 disbursements made through the FinTech electronic payment system in the amount of $789. So moved. Second. Motion, Vice President King. Second, Commissioner Riley. Any discussion, Commissioner Egan? Alcohol is not within our mission. We should return the stock. I'll be voting no. Any other discussion? Bridget, if you would, please. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Next, I will entertain a motion to approve the May 28th, 2020 regular meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Motion, Vice President King, second, Commissioner Riley. Any discussion, Commissioner Egan? Uh, I just like my questions and the, and the answers uh, added to the minutes. Thank you. What? Can you clarify uh, that comment, Commissioner Egan? The questions and the minutes, I did not see that they were added, the ones that I asked to the auditor. Minutes are summary. Yeah, so what do we do, pull the tape? 
if, if you want me to add that much detail to minutes, I don't know that it's appropriate. But. I think the, any question regarding financial um, uh, items, and especially to an auditor, you, know, you don't need a verbatim by any means, but you should capture the spirit and, and the question. Can I ask Attorney Price for an opinion on this? The answer those are the body. If you don't like the written summary, then his motion is to, it would have to be verbatim because she's not even qualified to interpret it. So it would be a verbatim transcript of the questions and answers. Uh, and that's what the board wants us to put in. The, the, the minutes belong to the body, not to any one commissioner, not to Bridget, it belongs to the body. So his motion is to put in that transcript and, and see if it has any life. So, point of clarification, please. Well, he's not making a motion at this point. Well, that's why he's raising the question. That, that's why he pulled the item. He doesn't want to approve the minutes as written. He's telling you why he doesn't want to approve them. So if, that, if people want to join him in that position, they should vote no. But if the body votes yes, then nothing changes with the minutes. Right. Okay. The minutes belong to the body. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Rich, can you just clarify that? It was hard for me to hear that. I'll ask the attorney Price to restate it because he can say it much more articulately than I could. Uh, okay, so thank you. Mr. Egan has pulled the, the minutes because he doesn't believe they're uh, complete in the sense that they do not include his particular questions and the particular answers. And, uh, and so with that criticism, he suggests that they not be, he would vote no to approve the minutes as written. If you concur with him, then you would vote no on this motion. If you believe the minutes are a sufficient summary, then you vote yes. The alternative that Commissioner Egan is requesting would require, because the paraphrase, although I appreciate the attempt at efficiency, not qualified to do it, would be a verbatim transcript of his questions and the answers that we would pull the tape. So that's the question before you. If you agree that this is not an accurate summary of the body's work, you vote no. If you believe that it's a sufficient and accurate summary, you vote yes. Thank you. To be fair, Dirk, I, I now uh, I said my questions. I don't believe anybody else asked any questions of the auditor of their review of the financial statements. So if they did, and I'm having a senior moment at 45, I'd like their questions and the answers uh, submitted into the record as well. Point of clarification, Bridget, does the public have access to the tape, to the actual audio tape? They do. They, okay. have, they have the recording. It's, it's uh, Okay, on account of that, I'm fine with it. Personally, because the public can access the question and the answer on the on the audio tape. Any other discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. I'm sorry. What survives longer, the minutes or the video recording? This question was: What survives longer, the minutes or the recording? The minutes are the public record there forever. The recordings are subject to whatever the Illinois Archivist will tell us about this. The, having these recordings uh, is new, so we don't know. But the minutes are forever. Anything else on this? Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Janner? Yes. Next item on our agenda is our annual meeting, so I will turn the meeting over to Executive Director McGurry to accept nominations for the Office of President. Thank you, uh, soon to not be President um, This time we'll accept nominations for the Office of President. I'd like to nominate Mike Riley. A second. Do we have any other nominations out there for the Office of President? Okay, if there are no further nominations, I'll accept the motion to close the nominations for the Office of President. Move to close the nomination of the Office of President. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, when your name is called, please indicate your choice for the Office of President. Bridget, please call the roll. Commissioner Carlson? Mike Riley. 
Commissioner Egan? Abstain. Commissioner Janner? Mike Riley. Commissioner King? Mike Riley. Commissioner McGroom? Mike Riley. Commissioner Riley? Mike Riley. Commissioner Todd? Mike Riley. Congratulations, President. Thank you very much. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> get the uh, now, as uh, newly elected president, I will accept nominations for the office of vice president. I'd like to nominate Mike King. Second. A motion a second. Are there any further nominations for the office of vice president? If there are no further nominations, I will accept a motion to close the nominations for the office of vice president. So moved. We're here second. 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 Is a uh, initial vote is a voice vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. When your uh, name is called, please indicate your choice for the office of vice president. This is a roll call vote, Bridget. Commissioner Carlson. Mike King. Commissioner Egan. Kinger. Commissioner Janner. Mike King. Commissioner King. Mike King. Commissioner McGrew. Mike Kinger. President Riley. Mike King. Commissioner Todd. Mike King. Thank you very much. And congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Next, we have the appointment uh, of the, uh, the board treasurer. Make a motion. I'd like to uh, nominate Sue Stanish. I hear a second. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? So roll call vote, uh, Bridget. Commissioner um, Carlson? Yes, uh, uh, Sue Stanish. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner Janner? Sue Stanish. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner McGroom? Yes. President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Next uh, item is appointment of uh, board secretary. On account of reading all those emails nearly flawlessly, I nominate Bridget Tuff. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, this is a roll call vote also. Bridget? Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner Janner? Yes. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner McGroom? Yes. President Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. And, uh, Bridget, I, I'd like to echo what uh, former uh, President Janner said. That was a lot of reading to do it. You did a great job. So thank Thanks. Uh, the next scheduled meeting will be a virtual meeting of the Board of Park Commissioners. June 25th, 2020, 6.30 p.m., remotely hosted from the Administration Building Boardroom. Next item on our agenda is executive session. Move to adjourn to executive session to discuss pending litigation under Section 2C11 of the Opening Means Act. And also, and also 2C1, depending on specific personnel. And, and 2C1. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Janner? Yes. President Riley? Yes.
Were we sent a number for closed session? I don't think we were. I'm just, I'm looking for the email now. I don't think we were sent a number for executive session. Maybe Omar got his mad IT skills on and we're in like an in, in fuego room. Yeah. No, it, it should be the same one from last time. I don't keep my texts, I delete them. All right, Bridget's gonna send it out. Secretary
Probably got a camo hat on now. Look out. There we go. Okay. Yeah, should be good. Oh, uh, yeah, we're missing the pro. In the Zoom? Yes. He's probably in Wisconsin. <laughs> no. Is, is Josh on the phone? Yeah, he's on the phone, so we could. I'm on the phone. All right. Just trying to dial into the Zoom. Yeah, just stay on the phone, Josh. Please. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'd like, I'd like to uh, call to order the regular meeting of the the June 11th, 2020 regular meeting. Back to order at uh, 9.42 a.m. Uh, to roll call. Go around. Mike Riley. Rich Tanner. Ray McGurry. Sue Stanish. Richard Thomas. Kay Zeppi. Eric Schutz. Brad Wilson. Omar Sandoval. Dirk Price. And by Zoom, we have Mike King, Tommy Carlson, William Mead in the third, CPA, CMA, CSBO, Samira Luthman, and on telephone, Rudy Todd, okay, you remember. Okay, um, Mr. King, you want to? Well, the, what, what we're looking for is a motion, if I may, uh, please. A uh, motion to direct corporate counsel uh, to act with the authority discussed in the executive session. So moved. So moved. So moved. We, have a, we have a second by uh, Vice President King. Motion was made by Richard. Yes, okay, we have a motion and a second. A discussion. Richard, take the roll, please. Commissioner Tanner? Yes. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McGroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Riley? Yes. Motion carries. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn the June 11th, 2020 regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners. We have a second. Second. Second by uh, Commissioner Jenner. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.